Let's get into this thing. I'm Kerry Bauman, and this is my first ever video and in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Now let's start with the layout of the phone. Up front, you were greeted with this massive 6.2 inch 2960 by 1440 screen. Also on the front, you have an eight megapixel front facing camera. On the right, you have your power button. Up top, you have your SIM and micro SD card slot. On the left, you have your volume rockers and Bixby button. On the bottom, you have your speakers, USB-C port, and headphone jack. And on the back, you have your 12 megapixel camera and fingerprint sensor. First off, I'm glad Samsung included a headphone jack on this phone, and I'm really glad they included it on the bottom. It gets kind of awkward when you're charging and also have something plugged into your headphone jack. And also when you're pulling your phone out of your pocket and something's plugged into the headphone jack, it's a lot less awkward when it's on the bottom. Also, I really like having the fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone. Typically, when I'm pulling my phone out of my pocket, I'm already pressing it, and then a display is ready to go by the time it's up to my face. And while I really don't like the placement of this fingerprint sensor, after a while of using it, the location really did become second nature. And as someone with bigger hands, reaching that fingerprint sensor with only one hand really wasn't that big of a deal. I'm not going to spend too much time on the display of the device because you've seen it everywhere, but I will reiterate, this screen is absolutely beautiful. It has great colors and contrast, and the screen gets really bright. It really is the first phone I've ever owned where I can use it in direct sunlight and still see the screen. Even after a week with this phone, I'm still in awe about how nice this screen is. I debated on going with the Galaxy S8 over the S8 Plus due to size concerns. My last phone was a 5.7 inch Nexus 6P, and really that was about as big as I wanted to go. However, due to the nearly bezel-less design of the S8 Plus, I was pleasantly surprised to see that the footprint of this phone is actually less than that of the Nexus. The bottom speaker is okay at best. The sound quality is pretty good, but it doesn't get very loud. And with it being on the bottom, if I'm holding my phone with two hands, and now I'm running the show, I'm chanting, we want flying dildos, and the place is going nuts. Obama to these guys, not yeah. way before Barack Obama was even Barack Obama. Or it's resting on my chest before bed. <laughs> you really can't hear anything out of it at all. Although I really love how the screen takes up nearly the entire front of the phone, I really do wish they would have found a way to include front facing speakers on this one. When it came to the software, I really wanted to have the experience that Samsung intended for me to have. I use native Samsung apps as opposed to their Google counterparts. And while I haven't owned a Samsung phone in nearly five years, the feeling is almost exactly the same as it was back then. First off, the performance is absolutely incredible. Everything is really smooth, and thus far I've experienced no lag whatsoever. They've included some nice features, such as the always on display, which shows information important to you at all times. You can hard press the home button to wake the device, or double press the power button to launch the camera. You can swipe from the edge of the device to activate the edge display, which lets you choose between apps, people, or screenshot features. You can also record up to a 15 second GIF of whatever's happening on your screen by selecting animation, cropping, and pressing record. There is also the extended screenshot feature, which I really like. After you take a screenshot, you have the option to scroll to the bottom of the screen and continue the screenshot as many times as you need. So far, battery life has really been great. This is honestly the first phone I've ever owned that can last me through the end of the day without needing to charge. And I'm a pretty heavy user. Even with the resolution set to max, as well as the brightness, I can still get about five hours of screen on time with a little left to spare. There are some things that really irritate me about the software though. First off, right out of the box, at the top of the screen, Samsung felt the need to include some advertisements, as if they weren't getting enough money out of us when we were paying $900 for this phone. Next is the keyboard. The stock Samsung keyboard has got to be the worst I've ever used. Typically, I like to swipe text with only one hand, and this is horribly inaccurate. Even when I use two hands to type, the predictive text is really bad. Oftentimes, I'll have a word correct, and it'll autocorrect it to a word that I'm not even sure exists. As a consumer, this would honestly be the first thing I change about the phone. The last one is Bixby. Bixby is Samsung's new mobile assistant to compete with Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant. As soon as Bixby was announced, everyone laughed at it, myself included. Why do we need another mobile assistant? However, I went into it with a completely open mind, hoping to enjoy it. 
So far, I've really got nothing out of it. Even opening it is kind of annoying. By swiping right on your screen, you get a set of personalized cards, but it takes a bit of time to load, unlike the Google Assistant, which are already loaded for you by the time you open it. Even once it's open, I really haven't got anything useful out of it, except for maybe the weather. The aspect of Bixby that I can get behind is Bixby Vision. I've seen mixed reviews of Bixby Vision online, but so far everything I've tried has been pretty successful, especially if you take a picture of the packaging of an item versus the actual item. From there, you're just a few clicks away from purchasing it on Amazon. And while we're on the camera, I will say that I love this camera. I've got numerous compliments from people telling me how great the quality was. With good lighting, the 12 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization takes some really great shots. However, with any smartphone, under low light, the pictures can look pretty grainy. I am pleasantly surprised with the performance of the flash of this phone at night. The pictures actually ended up looking pretty good. Videos can be recorded in 4K at 30 frames per second, or 1080p at 60 frames per second. The recorded sound quality is decent. It's about what you would expect out of any smartphone. Even the 8 megapixel camera on front has blown me away, keeping my selfie game on point. Overall, this phone is exactly what you would expect. A premium feel inside and out, amazing performance, and the software is as Samsung as you can get. If you're on the fence about this one, I highly recommend it. Even after a week of using it, I can't get over how good it looks. But overall, I think that's pretty much everything the average consumer needs to know. If you like the video and want to see more, please like it, please subscribe, I could use all the support, follow me on all the social medias, hopefully we'll see you guys again. Thank you for watching. Hey, what's up everybody? As I mentioned, I've got about 50 or 60 cases for the Galaxy S8 Plus. Like I've been saying all week, I'll continue to pump these videos out. If you want to see more videos, especially at this rate, then make sure that you guys leave a big thumbs up because it lets me know. Enan here from Udroid Mania, and you're watching my two top rinky cases for the Galaxy S8 Plus, so let's do this. First up, we're starting with the Rinky Fusion, and you guys have heard me mention several times over that this is one of my favorite cases. I always keep this in my collection and I get it with every device that I have. This is a one-piece bumper style case. It's got a hard polycarbonate back and a TPU bumper that runs around the outer. If you've seen any of my reviews, then you guys already know what things I look for when I'm checking out a new case. And if you're new around these parts in today's video, you're going to get the Cliff Notes version. When it comes to rinky cases, they tick all the boxes. For example, you've got precise cutouts, check, lanyard support should you need or want that, responsive and tactile buttons, that's two more checks. Up top, we've got a cutout for the noise canceling microphone. On the right hand side, you'll find the power button. And what I like about rinky cases is they give you a nice amount of feedback. On the back of the case, the only thing that you're really missing here is that guide to help find the fingerprint scanner, but I guess you can't have everything. But at least you can lay it on the table. Moving on, we come to our second case and we're going to step things up a little bit here. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. This is the Flex S. It's another one piece case. It's made from similar materials as the Rinky Fusion. It's designed to be a little bit more impact resistant and maybe to look a little bit better. It's lightweight, and there's not a lot of bulk here, so it certainly maintains the thin profile of the Galaxy S8 Plus. With this case, though, it's not going to be as protective as an outer box. This one, to me, is more around design. I mean, if you've got this nice phone, you don't necessarily want to cover everything up, right? So let me let you guys think about that for a minute or two. And while you're doing that, let's have a closer look. So that's what's up, right? If you're getting this phone and you're looking for a case or a tempered glass screen protector, stick with me because we're going to try and see what's out there. Now I've said this before, I can show you guys everything that I do in a video when I test these cases just because I want to keep it to a certain length of time. I look at as much as I possibly can, I try to test out everything, and then I let you guys know about it. When it comes to these two cases, they feel great in the hand, they're lightweight, you'll also get some protection here, they're thin yet sleek, 
And we've got a screen protector to pair them with. Yeah, so I'm saying these are definitely a good buy. And that's all I got. The links are down below if you're interested, so go and check them out. Okay, so there you guys have it. What do you think of these top two cases by Rinky for the Galaxy S8 Plus? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're familiar with the Fusion, you can see that they've gotten rid of those dust plugs on this case. I mean, at this point, they're probably not even necessary anyway since the phone is IP68 certified. But whatever, you know, I mean, I don't make them, I just review them. Costs aside on these two, I'm very happy with these cases, which is why I recommend them to you. Any questions? Leave those in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you. Alright, so I have to move on now for the moment. If you've seen my video last week for the Galaxy S7 Edge and that nano screen protector, I wanted to let you know I'll be wrapping that video up tomorrow. I'll upload it to the channel and announce the winners. So if you haven't seen that video and you have that phone, go check it out. It's not too late, so I'll leave a link down below for that. Alright, so finally, the last little bit of information that I want to share is, you guys are doing a great job in terms of letting me know what cases you'd like to see for the Galaxy S8 Plus, so continue to do that in the comments below, and I'll see what I can do. So if you're new to the channel, now is definitely the time to go ahead and click that subscribe button for more content like this. Welcome to the channel. As always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in my next one.